Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor. Today's topic is going to be my favorite books in general. If you ask me what my 10 favorite books are, I have a hard time coming to a decision because I'd like to say what are my favorite 100 books. And we'll talk a little bit about books just to see if people enjoy what we have to say about them. Now the very first book that I acquired consciously is this one. And I was in grade six. That means I was 12 years old. That would have been in 1952. I was born in 1940. This is called the Ashley Book of Knots. The price is still in here. And the price is $15. Now as a university student, I spent many of my summers earning a dollar an hour, so a day's wages would be $12. This book was worth more than a day's wages at that time. Today you can buy the book for $80, which I think in a way is a buy. Now, when I saw this book, I developed the inclination to want to own it. So I went to the librarian and I said, can I, where can I buy this book? And the librarian uh, helped me to order the book and I got the money and she eventually uh, had the book in her hands and I have enjoyed it ever since. Um, uh, I was interested in knots to the extent that when I encountered this book which has about almost two and a half thousand knots in it and so on. So it stands as the very first, historically, the very first book I ever bought brand new and I, up to that point I never owned a hardcover book. The local library is actually pretty good and the next book that, that came to my attention is called Wildwood Wisdom by Ellsworth Jager. And you'll see here that if you look at it, you'll see that every second page is pictures and diagrams and line drawings. And I found that that was the book that appealed to me a great deal because it wasn't just writing. It was a lot of pictures on how to do something. And this Ellsworth Jager, this is one here is called Wildwood Wisdom. He has about four or five uh, other books that relate to outdoor living and nature and so on. Then came the third book by a guy that's been around, Daniel Beard, and I am very pleased to see that there are reprints of his books. And again, you invariably find books that, that appeal. They have a lot of diagrams, a lot of pictures, and that many of these people realize that outdoors people are kind of visual. They like to see what you're talking about. And before the days of photography, the the... The cheapest way to get a diagram is to make a line drawing. And so you have all of these that illustrate and give you the plans and the ideas. And you hardly have to be able to read to be able to get the gist of the information visually uh, without the written word. Now there are other books that come in and very early in my career I ran across, very shortly after he published it, Larry Dean Olson's Outdoor Survival Skills. And this was sort of related to the way we used to do things when we were in the, the, uh, the age, the, the, the lithic technology. That is, you crack your rocks and you work with them. No iron and whatever. And to this day, I would say every word in this book uh, is a valuable word because it's written that way. And uh, he uses a magic combination of good pictures and, and the odd um, line drawing where it's necessary to make something clear. Now when it comes to survival, I would say the early books that really had an impression on me, this one here I always thought was a very good survival manual and it was written for the New Zealand Air Force, I think, for the, the uh, pilots in the, in the New Zealand. Uh, and it, it struck me as being pretty comprehensive with regard to following the, the philosophy of survival at the time. And another one that maybe is at the top of the list is called the Bushman's Handbook. And this one has more text, but the guy really says clear and concise things and gets to the, the heart of the matter in such a smallish book. When I see a book this large, I begin to question about, is this cover every knot in the world? Every knot ever tied by one kind it is rather intimidating. I'd like to see a little booklet like we 
tended to publish, something that a person isn't intimidated by that's uh, uh, 32 pages. Now here is a, a classic, this is Down But Not Out, that is used by the RCAF, and this is the, uh, after the handouts were all in Gestetner uh, format, they decided to put a booklet together, and it was really good from my perspective, and then something changed when they made it into a bound book. But I most certainly like the, the uh, uh, fundamental type of, of knowledge that was currently used in the RCAF. And this booklet more or less came on the scene about the same time that Tom Roycroft did. So basically it evolved and developed during the time of his tenure at the survival school. But of the hundreds of books that I own, and thousands of books that I own, uh, these uh, sort of uh, are ones that I get really worried if I think the house is going to catch on fire because I like to have them in the right place to grab them and get them out of the house so that I can still have them later on in, in life uh, to sit and enjoy these. These books I've re read over and over and over again uh, in my whole career since I acquired the books.